The first type of testing we'll talk about is unstructured testing approaches. And as you might expect from the word unstructured, those are probably not a good thing to be doing a lot of time on. The first one is smoke testing. Now, a smoke test comes from the hardware world, where when you turn the power on, sometimes smoke comes out of one of the chips, and, and that's a bad thing. It means you may have had a design error. For software, it's the same thing. It's much less common to have smoke actually pour out of a computer due to a software defect. But the point of this is that you're doing a quick check to see if all the software runs. So it's just like applying power to a piece of hardware. You're not asking what it does. You're asking, does it not catch fire? Same thing for software. You set up your software. You do a quick run. You ex exercise a couple of inputs, and you see what happens. Smoke tests have value in upfront deciding whether or not it's worth time spending on the rest of the test, but they should not be mistaken for a thorough test of the software. Exploratory testing is a different type of unstructured testing. That's where an expert tester beats on the system to see whether it seems to be operating properly, and it's a good way to find the low-hanging fruit to fix, especially if the tester is good. So in this case, the exploratory testing has an oracle that's what's inside the tester's head, and they're asking if the testing seems reasonable or not. That's a reasonable way to spend a small fraction of your test time, but for safety critical and high dependability systems, you probably want more rigorous notions of coverage. The problems with these unstructured approaches are that it's hard to know how much you've tested. Test coverage, or in other words, how thoroughly have you tested the system, can be subjective. The effectiveness heavily depends upon tester skill. So if you have a really good tester, they may find a huge number of bugs. If you have a bad tester, they may find very few. The catch is, if you have a tester who you're not sure if they're good or bad, and they find very few bugs, then it might be that they're a good tester and there are no bugs, or it might be they're a bad tester and there's plenty of bugs, and it's really hard to tell the difference. 